What's up, lunatics? Welcome back to the Matt Luna Fishing Podcast. I am your host, Matt Luna. Thank you for listening to this episode. We're going to talk fall fishing, and we're going to talk about how it's been not too nice to me, how it's been a little bit tough. Um, I'm going to tell you my thoughts on why I think it was a little bit, why it's been a little bit tough. But first, I just want to say thank you to all the veterans out there. Yesterday was Veterans Day, so I hope everyone enjoyed their day off yesterday if you got one. But um, big shout out, big thank you to all those veterans, all those who have served our awesome country. My dad was in the Marine Corps and um, served our country. So all those that served, you got a special place in my heart. And um, just want to say thank you for everything that you do to keep us safe and to preserve our freedom. So happy Veterans Day to everybody and big thank you to all those who have served. So I've been fishing a little bit ever since I got home from the US Open and um, I took a couple people fishing last week. Um, I went fishing yesterday myself and this fall bite has been tough. Um, You can get bit, you can catch fish and you can catch good fish too because they're all fattening up, getting ready for the winter and all that. But it's been a little funky. They're definitely on the shad. They're definitely chasing that bait. Depending on what um, lake I go to, they're either breaking the surface chasing that bait, or you can just see that deep bait suspended or down towards the bottom, depending on what depth level you're at. And, um, you know, they just aren't all there. Like, there's fish shallow, there's fish deep, there's fish suspended, and that makes it tough for us fishermen to go out there and try to catch these fish. When the fish are all scattered around, you have shallow fish, deep fish, suspended fish, that's when I feel like the bite is the most tough. And that's when it seems like, you know, junk fishing can take over. I mean, you could catch a fish on a reaction bait shallow. You could catch fish down deep on a jig or a drop shot or Carolina rig or something like that. But you could also catch something, you catch some fish throwing something that's kind of in that suspended water column, like a Alabama rig or an underspin or a swim bait that's just kind of in that water column where those fish are suspended just waiting. Um, that just makes things tough because you can't just hone in on one thing and go out and catch them. Like they're not all on the bottom. They're not all on the points or whatever. They're just scattered. You have fish in the back cuts. You have fish on main lake structure. You have fish, you know, suspended and then you have fish out deep. It's just kind of a funky time of year. These fish are just trying to find that bait, trying to find stuff to eat. And, um, it's been a little bit frustrating for me and I'm sure it's been frustrating for a lot of other people. So for example, yesterday I went fishing and, um, I was throwing a spinnerbait in the morning and uh, pretty quickly got a bite. It wasn't a great fish, but it was a it was a bite. Kind of started putting the piece of the puzzle together, and I uh, I hadn't fished that lake in a long time. It's a local lake to me, but um, it'd been a long time since I've been out there, so I had no idea what the bite was. Um, but I started throwing that spinnerbait. The the water clarity wasn't awesome. It wasn't like mud, but it definitely wasn't clear like I've been fishing lately. So I felt like that spinnerbait was definitely a good option. And, um, so I kept throwing that around and I get to this, you know, little cut and there's this brush pile that was sticking out of the water and throw the spinner bay out and I let it sink all the way down and, um, I get another bite and that was a decent fish. And what's weird is I got bit on that spinner bait down deep and I got bit on it shallow, just throwing it to the bank and reeling it back in. And, um, that kind of goes to my point where you catch fish shallow and you catch fish deep. And then I could also see fish kind of suspended um, off the bank, just kind of hanging in there, just probably waiting for bait to swim by and they're gonna go out and ambush it. You know, and as I was fishing, I come across these little points and I throw the jig out there and um, you know, I'm fishing along and I, I come up to this little point and I throw the jig out and um, I'm just dragging along and I get bit, I set the hook and um, it was a solid fish. I don't know, maybe three, four pounds, something like that good fish so I'm kind of like pumped hoping that 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 jig bite's going to be good and um you know I just kind of alternate between the spinnerbait and the jig as I go along and um so I have two fish deep um two fish on reaction baits one fish deep on a jig so two different baits two different techniques so I'm still really not honing in on what these fish are doing so knowing that these fish are are on the bait um pretty good I, I keep fishing along I go to the back end of the lake and um, I start throwing that spinner bait and some brush that's in the back of the lake and um, I'm just fishing around and something's telling me throw a crankbait throw a crankbait throw a crankbait so I pick up my six cents crankbait and I'm throwing it around and I'm trying to like fish this this brush line basically 
you know if you can name in your mind if you have grass around your lakes more than you have brush like you have that weed line and i'm trying to fish this brush line almost like a little tree line and i'm um, throwing that crankbait along it and i'm bringing it through and um, i get another bite on the crankbait coming through that brush smallest fish of the day but nevertheless it was a bite um, another fish in the boat and um, another technique so this goes back to what i was talking about junk fishing you just got to cover water run into these fish find the ones that want to eat and um, just don't be afraid to change baits don't get too dead set on on whether or not you're going to catch them on a jig or you're going to catch them on a worm or you're going to catch them on this or that you got to be willing to make those adjustments kind of fish the moment as mike iconelli would say and i think that's going to give you probably your best chance at um, catching fish throughout the day so something else that i found that that's frustrating when it comes to fall fishing is that at least around where i live and where i fish consistently in the fall the bite turns off like at some point in the day 10 o'clock 11 o'clock it doesn't really matter but at some point the bite just straight up turns off and you are hard pressed to get a bite and um that my last fishing trip was no different i'm just fishing along getting bit here and there and then all of a sudden that light switch turns off and it's like the fish disappeared and um, you're not gonna get bit and um, that was kind of frustrating because I just kind of wanted that one more fish that one more bite and then I was gonna get out of there for the day but I just couldn't manage to get that bite and um, I talked to some people after after I was done fishing and everyone that I talked to it was it was tough out there the morning was okay and then that light switch just turned off and those fish turned off and they didn't want to eat anymore and I think I could have probably caught more fish if I would have gotten to the lake a little bit earlier. Um, I didn't start fishing until like 7.30, 8 o'clock and um, I only had a short window um, left to get bit when that light switch turned off and those fish just stopped eating. And, and don't get me wrong, I think that there was somewhere on that lake you could have gotten bit throughout the day. I just, I don't know where that part of the lake is right now. I definitely think the fall is when you're going to end up with, you know, 20 rods on the deck of your boat or 10 or basically what I'm trying to say is you're going to end up with a lot of rods on the deck of your boat. You're going to have a crankbait. You're going to have a spinnerbait. You're going to have an Alabama rig. You're going to have a swim bait. You're going to have a jig. You're going to have a drop shot. You're going to have, you know, a creature bait. You're going to have a bunch of different stuff on the deck and that's okay. I think that this is the time of year where junk fishing is going to take over. I think this is the time of year where you're going to end up catching, you know, multiple fish throughout the day and you're going to catch them on all different baits. I think that's just because these fish are out and all over the place like i was talking about you're gonna have fish shallow you're gonna have fish deep you're gonna have fish suspended these fish are wanting to find food they're wanting to find the bait but they're not going to pass up a meal if they're down on a rock pile and they see that jig come across and they think it's a crawdad and boom they're going to go eat it i think primarily these fish are wanting to eat the bait they're wanting to eat that shad and um, so i think that if you can stick with some of those shad imitation patterns and baits i think you're gonna have probably your best bet on consistency but that jig bite's just gonna start to pick up that jig bite's gonna get better and better because as the water gets colder and colder those fish those bait fish are gonna die off depending on how cold it gets or they're gonna move super deep and those fish you're gonna be able to target them with the jig so the jig bite should start getting better and better but definitely right now um, at least where i'm at that shad they're on the shad big time and those shad patterns are gonna probably be your best bet but don't be afraid to mix it up don't be afraid to just fish whatever feels right sounds right you think's right because you probably can get bit on it as well go junk fishing figure out what's working in your area and sometimes it's five different baits for five different fish and that's okay just go out there have fun stay motivated and just keep grinding and those fall fish will bite it just might be a little bit of a struggle you know, it would have been nice to have gotten out there a little bit earlier, but um, I decided to go to the gym in the morning because um, I need to make that a little bit more of a priority. So I've probably been doing all this social media stuff, I would guess around three years. And um, when I first started doing all this stuff, I was in super good shape, best shape of my life. I played sports all through my life, but I was never in as good a shape as I was when I first started putting out content. Um, I'd just been the leanest I'd ever been. Um, definitely the best shape of my life and as I've been fishing and as I've been doing all this social media stuff and traveling and going out of town and fishing all these pro-am events and stuff like that I have definitely let that go and I am far from being in my best shape of my life so what I've 
you know, going to be doing now is making that much more of a priority. You got to shed some of these LBs, got to get back in better shape. And I'm not going to take it quite as seriously as I did in the past, but I definitely want to make it a, a focus. And I definitely want to get back in better shape and have the clothes fit better. And so you'll probably see me talk about the gym or talk about what I'm eating or something like that a little bit more often than I definitely have in the past. Um, I've always worked out. Ever since I was 18, I've had a gym membership. I'm 33 now. So as you, as you can see, I've definitely been you know, in the gym regularly. But my problem is I like to eat and I like to eat garbage. And I think we all do, um, whether that's candy or a burrito or whatever. You know, I like to eat. So for me, my problem has never been getting to the gym. I know for a lot of people, they don't like going to the gym, but I enjoy working out. I enjoy lifting weights. Um, but my problem is I like to eat and I like to eat junk food and um, that does not equate to being in shape. You could not outwork a bad diet. So I'm going to make it a focus to get back in better shape. I know what to do. I've been in really, really good shape. I've had a six pack in the past and not that long ago. And um, I just got to be diligent. I got to persevere. I just got to make it a priority and I just got to stay disciplined and I know that I can make that happen and get back in better shape. All right, so enough about my diet, enough about working out, enough about me needing to lose weight and getting back in shape. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode, today's podcast. Um, please subscribe, whether you're listening on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, whatever. Please subscribe so you can get you know notified of all the episodes. And if you're on iTunes, please go leave a review on my podcast. Um, obviously, I hope it's a good review, but nevertheless, just go please leave a review. All those reviews make it so people can find my podcast a little bit easier. It'll show up on suggested or recommended podcasts. So please go leave a review about my podcast. Um, I'm definitely trying to make it more of a priority, trying to put out more content than I have in the past, or at least more consistently. So please go leave a review on iTunes. And if there's another place that you can leave a review on whatever podcast app you're using, I'd love it if you did. Um, let me know if you leave a review, maybe screenshot it and tag me on Instagram or wherever. And, um, I'll share that out as well because I just want to get this podcast to grow. I want to get more people listening. I think podcasts are going to get more and more popular, but, um, thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one. I really appreciate you guys' support. And, uh, like I said, stay tuned for the next episode. See ya.